Excellent. Hello, everyone. Hello. A big welcome to FS Digital Events and today's Role Model Career Masterclass. Our guest speaker joining us today will be telling their career story and sharing experiences. And then we will invite the audience, which is comprised of students at home, um, who are beaming into this webinar today to ask questions. So my name is Neelam Jagate and I will be hosting this session today. And we hope to support students to make informed decisions about their careers um, by offering uh, career lessons and guidance and some tips um, and just some general advice as well about different careers that are available to young people today. And to the audience at home, um, your audio, video and your chat function has been disabled for safeguarding purposes, but you can still interact with us using the Q&A box. And we really, really do encourage you to ask questions. Um, and the more you ask, the more you gain. So please, please do ask questions. We are recording the session as well, and it will be featured on our YouTube channel and on our platform. So sit back, enjoy the webinar and do make some notes as well if you like. With us as well, we have uh, Amy and Matt, who are both teachers who are supporting us today with the webinar, um, who will just sort of be listening and encouraging the kids at home to ask questions. First of all, thank you so much, Toby, for joining us. I'm so sorry you had some technical problems um, getting in, but you're here and we're really thrilled to have you. I know you're really busy, so we really appreciate your time. Um, for people at home wondering who is Toby? Toby is a government social uh, researcher at the Ministry of Justice. Um, and Toby, I was looking at your, your LinkedIn and you have described yourself as someone who has um, a passion for development and making a positive impact. You describe yourself as being ambitious, innovative, um, bubbly and a creative team player. So we're really uh, lucky to have you with us and we're keen to hear from you. So. The session is uh, booked for an hour, but we might not need that long. I think we'll sort of try to close the session after 45 minutes, make sure our, our students are still listening and still with us. Um, but over to you, Toby. So what I'd love to know is how did you start off? Um, so I want you to kind of spend about maybe seven, eight minutes talking to us about your career and your life story, really. What subjects did you study? Um, did you go to university? What did you study at university? Um, what were your experiences and how did you get to where you are today, basically, and everything in between? And yeah, we just want you to speak from the heart about, about your, your career, really. And then we'll open the, the session up to the students at home and we'll go into a Q&A as well. And I've got some questions for you as well. So over to you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> can you hear me clearly? Okay. So um, my career journey is not very long um, as I just left university last year. Um, so I'll start from the beginning, I guess. So um, I went to high school um, at St. John Fisher's Catholic College. So that's a local school that some of you might have heard of. Um, I left school with six GCSEs, um, A C and um, four BTECs that I merit. Um, so I studied history, um, RE, citizenship, um, maths, English, um, ICT. <clears throat> and um, the free sciences as well. Um, so at school, I kind of decided that I wanted to be a lawyer in the future. So this decision came from a career session we had. Um, I did a test that said that from what I put down, um, I'd be a good lawyer. So I guess I just kind of looked into the career, um, spoke to my family about it, and I decided that I was going to become some kind of solicitor um, and work my way up to be a barrister. Um, in terms of like extracurriculars I did, um, I mainly just did sports, um, so I did basketball, netball and athletics. Um, so following off from that, I went to Newcastle College um, next door um, for sixth form. So in terms of what I studied, I studied law, philosophy, history and maths. So I picked law um, because I wanted to have more insight of what a law career would look like and what I'd be working with um, and I picked history, um, maths and philosophy because I'd done the subjects at GCSE and I'd done quite well. Um, in terms of extracurriculars that I carried on with basketball, um, I was class rep for two years, um, I was communications officer of our students union um, and I was also an extra volunteer, so I worked on open days for prospective students. Um, 
one thing I did learn um, during my A-levels was that I didn't like civil law. Um, so I didn't think I could go to university and study a law degree um, if I didn't like half of what my degree would be. Um, so that was a really turn, a big turning point for me. I had to decide what I wanted to do, what I wanted to study. So I decided that I was going to do something criminal based. So whether it's going to be criminal justice, criminal law, um, criminology. Um, and I kind of looked at universities offering different courses um, and I picked um, my top five. Um, and I got acceptance offers, offers from all of them except, and then I accepted um, Loughborough University as my first choice. Um, so I left uni, uh, I left sixth form with three A levels um, in law, um, philosophy, and history. Um, I think a piece of advice that I'd like to give here at that point of my life was um, around the A levels and AS levels that you choose. So, as you can see, that my A levels kind of did influence what I chose at university. Um, but I still wasn't sure of what I was going to do and um, I picked courses simply because of the grades I got at GCSE but what you'll find is subjects at GCSE and subjects at A-level can be completely different sometimes um, so I wouldn't worry about except if it was for example a specific science course you wanted to do if you went to university I wouldn't worry about taking um, a subject specific A level. I would try and take different um, subjects that you think you would enjoy that you'd be interested in studying because um, that's more important. So I knew there was a few subjects I was interested in that I never took up at A level and I kind of have that regret now. Um, maybe that would have influenced my career path. Maybe I would have decided I want to do something else. Um, so that's kind of my advice at that level. Um, so I went on to um, Loughborough University. So I was there for four years. Um, I did my undergrad in criminology and social policy. So for those of you that don't know what criminology is, it's basically um, the study of crime um, and crime theories within society. Um, so I did that for three years. I really enjoyed it. Um, in terms of extracurriculars, I picked back up basketball. I did athletics. Um, I did a lot of volunteering opportunities. So I worked at in about six different committees. Um, I got involved with like, media, um, did some action volunteering, so I helped in the local community. Um, so we worked up things like alpaca farms, we did soup kitchens, that kind of thing. Um, and I really encourage, at, a, at any level, not just university, to really kind of throw yourself into these extracurricular opportunities. So I know a lot of people say, oh, they're good in terms of experience and on your CV and building skills. But I think it was also just really good for me in terms of development as a person. So I was quite shy um, until I got to university. And I think all the extra stuff I did made me quite confident in myself, um, which is good in terms of applying for jobs and that kind of thing, but it made me better as a person. Um, and I think it's also an opportunity to explore interest. So it could be something that does guide your career path. So um, I'll talk about that um, a bit later on and how, how that helped me. So during the three years, I decided once again, I did not know what I wanted to be. Um, I had several career modules um, where we had different guest speakers come in. And every time I was like, oh, I could, I could be that. I'd do some background research and be like, no, that's actually not what I want to do. Um, and I would just say at that point again, it's okay. Um, that opportunities will find you, present themselves to you, and maybe you'll find something you want to do then. So I decided that I needed to take time to decide what I really wanted to do. And I wanted to develop my skills at the same time. So I decided to do a master's. So I did it in social science research, um, in social policy. So basically criminology, because it's um, doing research in society and how crime works, is classed as social science. Um, so I decided this would be the next step up and I'll do this master's. And during this year, um, I decide what I finally want to do and spend more time focusing on that. Um, and yeah, it, opportunities did appear to me. So I started going to grad fairs, I started looking around the websites, 
um, and I saw an advert for the civil service fast stream. So basically that is a graduate program that um, looks to start you up at quite a high leadership level within the civil service um, and then progress you in terms of skills so you can um, progress to higher parts of the civil service than if you were to work your way in normally. Um, so they have plenty of different schemes. So they have like finance, economics, um, government communications, uh, media, um, but they specifically had a social research scheme. So I thought that was perfect because that was what I'd been studying. So I threw myself in and I applied for the job um, and I got it. And um, that's kind of where I am now. Um, so in terms of my job, um, when I applied for it, you got to put preferences in as what you wanted to be placed at, like so location, government department. And because I've had this interest in crime all the way through, um, I thought the Ministry of Justice was my perfect department. So I put that as my first choice and luckily enough, I got it. Um, but in the way that I said that, my extracurriculars could influence what you want to go into. Um, because I'd spent so much time doing media at uni, I'd been doing um, like live streams, I'd learned how to video edit. Um, I'd got really, I got real interest into that as well as sport. So I was looking at other government departments that interested me. I was like, yeah, I could um, work for the Department of Culture, Media and Sport. Um, and those influenced my other preferences in case I didn't get a Ministry of Justice. Um, so I think uh, really applying yourself to the vector curriculars can help you find new things that you didn't think you'd enjoy um, and learn new skills. Um, so in terms of my job specifically, what I do now, so I started um, September last year, so I've been working for just over nine months now. Um, so I am a government social researcher, so a social researcher is someone who kind of develops research projects um, and carries them out around different social issues. So whether this is health, um, poverty, gender, health, um, social policy, that kind of thing. Um, and the results you get from doing that research can be used as evidence to help inform government policy. Um, so that's what social research does. So in terms of the Ministry of Justice, um, it's a government department um, that focuses on the justice system. So we work with courts, um, prisons and probation. Um, and basically what a government social researcher would do in the Ministry of Justice is work to help improve those services that we offer to justice system users. Um, specifically what I'm doing now, so I got assigned to a project that's new to the Ministry of Justice um, called Data First. And basically what we're looking at doing is linking all the data we have across these courts, prisons um, and probation services um, and also having links of other government departments so we can do research on these so we can carry out research um, on these data sets um, which we can use as evidence to help improve those services that we offer to people so at the moment right now i'm helping in the mapping process to see what data we hold across the government department um, i'm doing a lot of stakeholder engagement and then in the next few months i should start be doing some research on these data sets. Um, but that's where I am now. Thank you so much for sharing, Toby. Um, yeah, within like seven minutes, you've really explained your journey so well. So thank you for that. Um, to the students at home, now is your time to ask questions. So please go ahead um, and then I will present the questions to Toby. Toby, I, I will start off. Um, so a couple of things that you, you know, you're definitely, and you said this in your in your LinkedIn profile about that you're passionate about, you know, social change, um, and you know you've clearly had a, a strong interest in criminology and social policy. Where does your passion, do you think, come from? And the reason I ask this is because young per, young people at home might be sat there thinking, I don't know what I want to do. I don't know where what my passions are right now. And I know you touched on volunteering and doing extracurricular things to kind of discover where you sit and where your passions come from. But I just would love to know where does your passion come from? And that might inspire other people to think about where their passions come from as well. Um, so at the beginning, I would say that 
I didn't, I just went with it. Because I was like, I want to know what I want to do with my life. And I've decided this is it and I'm sticking with it. So that was kind of that. Um, but I think where it came from was interest. So when I became interested in law at A level, I was like, this is something that really interests me. I want to find out more about it. So I want to study it. I want to, I want to take out uni. And then just doing criminology at uni and doing and uh, finding out about theories and how things work um, and that kind of thing, I thought it was quite interesting. Um, <clears throat> of course, you found out about some things that weren't right or you heard about some cases. And just knowing that I could become a researcher and go into the Ministry of Justice and do things that would impact and make a change and make things better was crazy to me I was like I want to do something I want to do something meaningful I want to do something that a interests me and then b has an impact on people um and that was the career I could the research I'm going to do now can inform policy that could make thousands maybe even millions of people's um experience with the justice system better amazing and can you, um, it's always a difficult question, but I'm gonna ask it anyway. What does a typical day look like for you? You know, what time do you get started? What time do you get finished? And, you know, I think you people need to know about working hours. Um, you know, how, how what, what do you spend most of your day doing? So I think that's actually my favorite thing about working um, specific, with the civil service, specifically um, with the Ministry of Justice is yeah, I know that you do the typical nine to five and stuff, but it's really flexible and I love that. Um, so you kind of have to do seven hours and a half a day. Um, that doesn't include your lunch break. So the typical eight hours, basically. Um, but the timing that you choose to do that is up to you. So I could work eight to four, nine to five, um, 10 to six. Um, that would be completely up to me. But I really love being able to decide so sometimes i'll wake up in the morning i'll be like oh i'll do eight to four so i can have the evening to myself to like watch netflix or whatever um sometimes i'm like i'm a bit tired i'm gonna go nine to five or if i didn't go to bed quite late i'm like okay ten till six <laughs> um but also it's in terms of the flexibility of working environments so obviously because of covid we're all working at home at the moment but beforehand you only had to be in a office about three days a week so I would always work from home two days a week as well and when I chose to do that was up to me um, so that was great um, I think from transitioning from being a student to doing a typical nine to five to eight to four job um, I think you just begin to value sleep a bit more um, I think it's a natural thing that you'll realize that you'll have to do things that the typical five hours you used to do couldn't cut it um, a normal working day for me would be waking up, logging on, um, addressing all the emails in my inbox. Um, I keep a to-do list so I know what tasks I need to do by what date. So I choose which one I feel like doing <laughs> um, and I focus on that to lunch. And then sometimes at lunch, after lunch, I swap over to the other task. Um, but yeah, sometimes it can be quite busy. Um, and I find myself being stuck to the computer for like five hours at a time. Um, but sometimes it can be quite relaxed. Amazing. And sort of you touched back on sort of you touched on school. Um, and I just want to take you back to school for a second. What were your experiences um, at school? Positive, negative, And what would you say to young people watching? today that maybe are losing a bit of momentum or losing a bit of motivation or are just simply feeling a bit you know with everything that's going on around the world what would you say to that young person watching and what were your experiences growing up mm, I would say that nothing is ever straightforward um so I did um I did I did join St John Fisher's in year nine um but for year seven eight um, I was at the Newcastle private school. Um, I didn't enjoy it there. Um, I didn't feel like I was getting enough support 
um, my grades weren't very good. Um, and I think at that point I chose to settle that I wasn't going to do much. Um, I, was, I wasn't going to go far and I was getting compl complacent. I was like, that's, that's it. I'll try and do my best, but I can't really do much. Um, it was a change of environment that did encourage me to do more. But my advice would be to never be complacent. Um, if, for example, you are getting the same grade, don't be like, this is all I'm going to get. It's never going to change. There's always things you can do. So you might revise really hard, work really hard. It might not be changing. It's just, it's easy just to reach out to someone, to reach out to your teacher and just explain the situation. Be like, I want to get, I want to, I'm honestly, I want to get a B. I've been working hard at home and doing this. Can you help me? And it's just those baby steps that can really help you to excel. So I went from being complacent and asking no teachers and having really low grades to just discussing it a bit more with my teachers, them supporting me, maybe giving me a bit of extra work. I know you don't want to do extra work. <laughs> um, but my grades just went up, my understanding of the subjects just went up and it really, it boosted my confidence as well. Um, I went from the person who was shy to ask questions and would usually ask her, for, ask her friends for questions to my friends asking me questions. Um, so I think whenever you're a bit down or you feel like this is it, what's the point um, if it's gonna change just who I am just be aware that you're the one that can make that change and there is support systems for you in place at school that can help with that. Um, but yeah, I think my experience in the first few years, I didn't enjoy. Um, and then from then on, as I realized that there were people to support me um, and I started having an idea of what I wanted to do and what I wanted to achieve, um, things got a lot better for me. And where did that, Sort of flip come from because you know you you were you were fine and then you know you got, got a bit complacent and then you started just like smashing it where did that sort of turnaround come from was it a shift in mindset was it um the conversation you had with maybe a teacher a role model maybe someone in your family can you remember like where that came from where you thought you know what no i'm going to give it my best shot so my parents um were quite big on grades um <laughs> so the grades I was getting, they didn't really seem to understand because um, they thought they thought I was smart. Um, I did excel um, at primary school. Um, I even skipped a year at one point. So they were really confused at where this drop had come from. So they, I think they assumed that I was not happy with the school, things weren't working out. So when I was moved, I didn't, they didn't really see any excuse for my grades to be low. They were like, this is a new start. Um, you can you can work hard like show us like what what you can do so i think in my head i was like yeah i need to stop being complacent like i've got a fresh start i need to actually do something about it um my parents are expecting good grades um and that was kind of my driver for that excellent um another thing that you you mentioned which resonates with me personally is that you said that you were shy growing up and then you got to university in new york you came out of your shell a little bit um, I'm waiting for questions guys at home please do ask any questions you have about careers um, just bob them in the Q&A box um, Amy and Matt if you if you have any questions please do jump in but the question that I have for you Toby is what if what is a shy person to do can, can they just stop being shy what can, do they wake up and think oh, I'm not shy anymore or do they have to do like baby steps and work towards something and and what are the benefits of not being I don't, I don't mean to say outspoken but just being a bit more confident and where do you get where do you build confidence or how do you build confidence rather it's definitely baby steps um and it's it's baby steps and finding the way to bring yourself out of your shell so i've always been quite awkward um i never really like being the center of attention um and I, I had like a lot of social anxiety. I didn't like, I didn't like talking to people. I didn't like social situations, um, which obviously was no good. Um, so I think I just thought if I went along to different things, um, I would naturally meet people, but be more comfortable. Like it wouldn't be forced. I wouldn't have to talk to people. Like we bond over an activity and that's how I'd start talking to more people. Um, 
So, of course, the best way of doing this was joining sport teams. You immediately become close to your team. You have that network to support you. Like, if you ever feel anxious in this situation or you feel a bit awkward, your friends know you so they can support you in that kind of way. So sports teams were always a way that I kind of brought myself out of my shell. Um, and then when I got to university, obviously, that's such a big place to be. Um, and it, was, it, it would have been easy for me just to hide out and not to go to anything. But because you're taking yourself away from your home environment, you're kind of, you need to realise that you need to take some steps to create like a family, to create your own social system at uni. Um, so yeah, just, tr I never tried to, I tried to take baby steps, but I never tried to force myself to do anything because if I forced myself and found myself uncomfortable, it would stop me from trying to do it again because I'd, I'd be like, oh, that's what happened last time. So I would always try and find things that interest me and then go along and join them. And that's how I built, built my network and that's how um, I became more confident. So obviously I love sports. So when I went out to university, I carried on. And for my halls of residence, there was a committee and they were requesting for like sports secretaries to help them um, run the sports in the halls. So I forced myself to run for that position. Um, and then I loved it. I loved the sport program so much that the next year I applied to be the chair. And when you start working on these committees, you have to go to meetings, you have to do presentations. And obviously you have the staff who works with the committee supporting you. So they started supporting me in giving these presentations and doing this work. And that's how I became more confident and built those skills. Amazing, thank you. And is uni for everyone? Definitely not. Um, I know a lot of people um, who think that is and think that to progress to certain careers that you need to go to university um, and no because for to go to university and to study a subject for three years you must have interest it might it must be something you want to do personally and if you feel like you've made that choice to go to university because everyone else is doing it but it's not really something for you um, it's not going to work out so I know a lot of people who dropped out mid first year um, I know someone who even tried to make it to the end and dropped out halfway through his last year. There's so many different avenues. Like I know so many, I had a friend who wanted to go through law, um, but didn't want to go to university, but his dad has like a law firm. So he started doing apprenticeships and that kind of thing. There's so many different avenues um, of working your way up. So obviously I went through university and qualified for the fast stream to go into the graduate scheme. And that's why I'm now at this kind of senior level. But I could have also just worked my way through. I could have not gone to university, just done A-levels, joined the civil service and worked my way up to that point. Um, and what you might find is while you're working your way up, you'll gain experience um, in those different departments and stuff that I would never have personally. Yeah. So there's the benefits of doing it both ways. It's just which way works for you. Um, not the way that everyone else is going. Exactly, and sort of figuring it out, figuring out your own method, I suppose. Um, we've got a bunch of questions coming through, which is a fantastic. Um, we have someone saying, is university and college hard? Uh, <laughs> I would say that thinking about my whole education, that college was the hardest for me, A-levels. Um, GCSEs was kind of a, they were fine I had no problem A levels I struggled quite a lot um, it was just I think I wasn't prepared for the switch like the level up from GCSE yeah. um, and the kind of work of independence how you're expected to go and do that work yourself not like homework and your tutors checking on it that kind of thing um, but I think it builds you as a person and helps you to develop so by the time I got to university, I was able to cope because it was things that A-level had taught me. Um, university, you can have, for example, any, at any point you can have a hard exam or you can have a hard piece of coursework. Um, but I wouldn't say it's specifically hard. And if it's a subject that you're interested in, so for example, 
you could have hated English or maths or biology and you could have found that really hard to focus on a study and not do well in that exam. But at university, if you're studying something specific to you, so for example, if you're doing something like sports science or textiles, you're going to be more motivated to pull your work into it to understand that subject better because you chose it and that's what you want to do. Yeah, absolutely. And just a second, just a second that, I mean, uh, my background is teaching. I've, um, my whole adult life, I've been working with 15, 16, 17 and 18 year olds. And, you know, my students have always said that college is, is challenging, but not necessarily hard, because if you have the tools and if you've got the sort of determination and, you know, you, you're ready to get up and get out of bed and get to college and, you know, have a good attendance, um, then actually nothing is unachievable. So, yeah, I think it, I think these things are challenging, but it's about how much you want it. Can I, just, can I just chip in and ask a question? Is that okay? Yeah, go for it, Matt. Hi, Toby. Thank you so far. Um, all the students that are listening so far um, over the next sort of one to two years are going to have to make big decisions about what A-levels they choose. Um, now, they're all very talented mathematicians listening, but how did you decide which A-levels were right for you? And um, did you know before A-levels that um, the Ministry of Justice was going to be a path for you or did you have other paths in mind? Um, so I didn't know. Um, I think that was the biggest um, I wish I could have had some more advice when at school, like what A-levels should you choose, how should you choose them? So I based my, the only thing that I based on my career and wanting to go forward was my law A level. So I was like, oh, I want to, I want to do law, I want to do something law, I'm going to take law as A level. Um, but I picked the other three simply based on the grades that I got in GCSE, like which subjects I usually perform better at. Um, so my biggest advice is just to consider subjects that you're passionate in, or you, if you had several different careers you were thinking about going into if there's like an a-level subject related to each career i would try and take those a-level subjects um and kind of narrow it down and see where you wanted to go because for me um personally i did i did love um maths at gcse uh maths is my favorite subject um, well, that, that's a good answer yeah <laughs> <laughs> i left um i left with an a star and I was over there with me and I was like, I'm definitely taking this at A level. But the thing that um, the problem was that I was um, so I, 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 at GCSE with maths, it was just so natural to me that it came to me like I was, I was naturally good at it, but it wasn't something I was passionate about. So I, I will admit that maths at A level gets a lot harder, but I wasn't ready to put in that extra work because it wasn't something I was passionate about or really wanted to do. So that's why I found that I struggled with maths at A-level um, and I dropped at AS um, to focus on my three subjects. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you, Matt. Um, and to anyone else who is thinking about or considering maths, we do have a maths for girls um workshop as well so this is a role model event but we have maths for girls events so do look out for those it's basically us trying to debunk the fear when it comes to maths and especially like young girls not enough young girls are taking maths so we're trying to you know eradicate that and stop that um but you can always watch some some sort of pre-recordings on our youtube channel where business volunteers have come on with a maths background who are saying look i did it and this, this is how i went about it it is difficult but these are the things that work for me so please do check those out as well. Um, any, let's have a look, uh, we've got some more questions. So someone has said, we've got an anonymous attendee saying, I am in year nine at the moment and my grades are good, but I think I need to get involved with volunteering and extra things like that. But I don't know what to get involved in as I want to get into motorsport. How should I make myself stand out in the motorsport um, sort of industry that, that that person wants to go in, into? Um, any, any ideas about motorsport, Toby? Um, I personally don't know much about motorsport, um, but I think the best way to kind of gain experience if that's something you want to go into is if there's any like local motorsport teams, um, companies, that kind of thing. I don't really know what goes in motorsport. Um, 
but if you look for volunteering opportunities um a lot of them will probably they won't advertise it but they probably let you come in and maybe do an internship so if there's a specific company who works with motorsports or what motorcycles are you doing motorsports they might give you um a week internship maybe during the summer or whatever yeah. um it's just really worth trying to look for those companies or organizations online and emailing them through you never know what you'll get back absolutely and i think also um you, you might want to use this time i don't know whether this you know your school's reopened but use this time to, to sort of really research and maybe look at accessing free webinars so something like this but designed you know some people talk about motorsport people who are passionate about that they'll i'm sure they'll be able to lead, sort of direct you to the right place as well but again a really good question um what are the differences between sixth form and college? Toby, do you want to answer that or should we? So, Go yeah, I, I can answer that. There's, there's not a difference really. So you, you still do A levels, um, but I think it's kind of how it's set out. So the reason why I didn't stay on at sixth form at my school was because it had just started a new trinity sixth form so they would link with two other schools in the area um so we could offer a wider range of subjects so i found that if i wanted to do the subjects i wanted to study i would actually have to go to three different schools mm. and i as, a, as an awkward person i didn't want to do that i didn't want to make friends at each school um so i went to the college next door um i think it's just it is a bit different so for example at college we address lecturers by the first names, whilst at sixth form you'd call them Mrs. or Mr. or Miss. Um, but just slightly different in the environment, but you're still learning the same things and doing the same things, doing the same exams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, another big, big difference, which a lot of students really care about is uniform. And in, I know in some sixth forms, there is still that expectation to wear a, you know, some kind of uniform. Whereas in colleges, things are, I guess, seem to be quite, Quite relaxed in that sense and especially the college that I taught in in sort of Kensington um, in Labour Grove you know it was a lot more relaxed but I mean in terms of the work that's involved you've got to work hard in six forms you've got to work hard in, in colleges and um, you know the college that I was at we had a really good relationship with um, parents so it's not to say you're at college and you know we're not going to be in keeping in touch with with parents we still do that so it's a it's a personal choice I would say and really really consider your options um, would you recommend taking very similar A-level subjects or very different ones? A really good question. Because um, <laughs> I know you had quite a, a nice variety, didn't you? But what do you think? I think it depends on who you are and what you want to do. So, for example, I had friends who took um, science subjects and math subjects, and of course, that worked across the board for them and how they formatted their work and that kind of thing really worked for them. Um, well, so I was quite lucky because um, I took all essay subjects except for maths. So it was it really helped me to build my essay writing skills and I was able to work on that. But if you want to take a mixture, I don't think there's a problem. Um, once again, it's what you're interested in. Yeah. But for example, if you did um, like sociology and psychology, it might be that you have, you learn about things that are similar in both subjects. But apart from that, I don't really think you need to take similar ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could, you could do drama and, and math, for example. You know, you can, it's completely up to you. If you're passionate about two things, um, I think you should really explore those, those areas. Um, and is there more work in college sixth form than in high school? Definitely. Um, <laughs> definitely, yeah. definitely. Um, I think I was a person um, that just didn't do as much work as I should have at um, GCSE. But I think that came back to bite me a bit at A-level because I had to put in the extra work and get used to putting in that extra work. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, I'm going to merge two questions. I've got one um, from Casey Washington. Um, is it easy to find the right course to do at college and university? And another one saying, what do you recommend for someone in high school? I think what they mean is, what do you recommend for someone to prepare themselves for college and university? So I suppose two similar things. Is it easy to find the right course? And what, how should someone prepare themselves for the next step? Um, when it comes to A-levels, 
um, I think it is kind of easy to find the right course because you can decide what you want to do. If you don't, for example, if you don't want to do A-levels and you want to do a B-tech, you can look into that. There's loads of different options and your teacher's always willing to give you advice and support. If you talk to people on college open days, they're willing to tell you what they consist of. Maybe you're not an exam person and you want to do more coursework. Maybe that's why um, you want to do a VTech instead of A-level. There's so many different options. When it comes to university, I think that can be a little bit more tricky. Um, and you really need to consider, so a lot of university websites will have the courses, but you really need to consider what these courses ex um, exist what because you might see for example criminal law at one university or another and assume it's going to be the same course but the other course could be um very exam heavy and one course could be very coursework heavy um and one course could have for example all the kind of modules you're looking at and you're interested in and the other course could have a bunch of modules that you don't actually like so when you're looking at those universities you shouldn't just think oh, the only difference is maybe one's high in the league table than the other. You should, con you should consider what is within those courses. Um, and I don't know, you don't, I wouldn't say, you can make different choices. So for example, if you like a course in um, maths at one university, um, but you like a course in English at another university, you can apply for the two different courses at two different universities and make that decision later based on your offers. Um, the only thing that will be different is your personal statement. It won't be centered around one subject. You'll talk about different subjects. Absolutely. And what course would you say offers the widest range of careers? Would you say maths? <laughs> maths would be a good one. So, um, what I'm finding, what what I'm finding, and what you'll find is a lot of jobs that you go into the future um, are looking for you to be able to work or use data in some way maybe not in so much depth but like using data um and with that data comes maths so <laughs> a lot the thing is you could go into university and study one course um but if you do change your mind there's always one year conversion courses into different things so for example i wanted to do law i decided to go into criminology i wanted to do social research and what I'm finding is like doing the research, I'm going to need to do a lot of data work. So I'm even considering going back and doing um, a data science master um, next year. Um, but I think, yeah, um, I would say, I don't know, English, maths, um, sciences, um, history, mm. any of the big broad like um, subjects could give you a variety of careers to go into. What skills do students need to gain from their studies or previous experiences? Um, the way I'm reading that is more sort of soft skills. So what soft skills do students need to gain from, from studying or work experience? Um, I would say good communication skills. That's very key, um, whether it's written or verbal. Um, because if you can't communicate correctly with employers or getting maybe you have a ton of experience but if you can't get that across um that's not going to really benefit you um confidence is good um they like to see that you're confident with what you do um so whether that is um just taking yourself to do those extra volunteer opportunities and building confidence that's that way um there's loads of little like, like how to become more confident um videos on youtube and stuff that you can look at that'll give you those little tips yeah, um that's good advice communication confidence and just know what you're going into so when you're going for a job when you're applying for university make sure you just do a little google search some research so when you talk to the employer if you're at interview you just know what you're getting yourself into because if they're talking about the company and the work you're going to do and you don't really you, it will show that you don't know mm -hmm. about the girl playing for and they'll think if she's not really interested in us why she applied for our job um so just being making sure you're knowledgeable before you apply for whatever you're applying for um working on your confidence um and communication skills yep 
exactly. And someone said, how can you gain confidence? I think we've answered that. I think we've sort of touched on that. Um, but definitely do check out maybe podcasts, go onto YouTube um, and maybe some TED Talks about how to raise confidence. Um, someone sort of taking it back to, to your work, what is your typical working environment like? Do you work with a team? Do you work at home? At the moment, you, you mentioned that you're working at home because of COVID, but generally teamwork is something that's really important as well. Yeah. Um, so I, my working environment is quite weird when we're not in the situation. Um, so most government departments, a lot of offices are based in London, um, but I still wanted to be based at home for a while. Um, so yeah, in Stoke here. So I found that they had an office in Leeds. Um, so for three days a week, I will travel to Leeds and work there in the office, but the rest of my team are based in London. So we do a lot of virtual conversations, a lot of teamwork. I'm quite lucky because I'm working with three other students who've just left university in the same position as me. Um, but it's really, especially, I think the best thing about teamwork is when you're unsure or you need some help, there's always people there to help you. Um, it might be that someone else takes the task and you can learn from them mm -hmm. um, and that you can take that task. Um, I think I definitely wouldn't enjoy my job as much if I didn't work in a team. And if you didn't do a topic as a GCSE, could you still do it as an A-level, like in college? Um, and another person saying, does what you pick for your options for GCSEs affect what you want to do in college? So, you know, if you do geography GCSE, can you do geography A-level or what, what are your thoughts on that? Or should we try something completely brand new for our further education? So they can impact a little bit depending on the college or sixth form you're applying to so for example if you wanted to take um a specific essay so um i know one of the requirements was if you want to take government and politics as an a level at my college you had to have a gcse in history um because it would help you in terms of writing so some of them have requirements but it's not exactly the same subject um but for example, if you wanted to take um, so-and-so science at this level, you needed to have these grades at all of the sciences at GCSE. Um, but for example, law, you can't take law GCSE most of the time. So they were just like, if you have a grade in a certain writing subject. So when it comes to that, it does depend. So I would think about if you want to take a specific subject that you think you'd need further knowledge in I'd consider taking your GCSE choices according to your A-level but then again for example you're not expected to study psychology or sociology or whatever at GCSE so those are subjects that you could take um, at A-level and not needed to have taken at GCSE. Excellent thank you and um, last question then um, and this is a really good sort of a question to end on someone has just said that they've missed quite a lot of the talk due to technical issues it's being recorded so don't worry you can watch it back on our youtube channel um and uh, but they're saying would you be able to summarize everything just before the end um and i think that that's we're going to sort of leave it at that so toby could you just and i can sort of take go through some of the takeaways as well but could you summarize a little bit about you know the, the main sort of advice that you'd give to someone watching um and and maybe someone who's considering their next step still a bit unsure as to what to do just summarise and then we're going to close the session. Great questions. Thank you, everyone. Um, I think my summary would be at high school. Um, don't So overall, don't worry if you don't know what career you want to go into yet. Um, I didn't know until last year um, and that's where I am now. Um, don't base your um, GCSE or A-level choices just on what you think you might good get, get good grades in or what you think is need, base it on things you want to enjoy, explore different career avenues. Um, never be afraid to ask for help. Don't get complacent or think that it's your fault or this is just a grade I'm going to get. Reach out. There's always someone there to help you and support you. Um, try and take on extracurriculars or try and volunteer somewhere. It's not just something that goes on your CV, but it's something that um, can help build you as a person and um, addressing any issues you might have. So confidence issues, any skills you want to gain. Um, and I, I don't know, 
that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's brilliant thank you i've got a few as well so you you touched on doing what you're passionate about and doing what feels right is what you said um do extra things like volunteering and extracurricular things and, and watching videos that are going to inspire you and also like you said about complacency you know if you if you if you feel yourself going taking a left turn and maybe becoming lazy or complacent you have to shift your mindset and you've got to do it today you can't do it tomorrow you have to do it now um, and also being shy doesn't have to necessarily hold you back so everyone's an individual everyone's different um and really own those differences rather than you know thinking that they're going to hinder your hinder your progress and your performance um and work on these things and, and you said baby steps as well so great toby thank you so much i think we've covered so much in the space of sort of 55 minutes um really really amazing questions from the audience thank you to amy and to matt as well for your time i'm going to close the session what i will say before i leave um the this entire thing has been recorded and we're going to we're going to add it to our youtube channel it should be up in a couple of hours so look out for it it's just found us to schools on youtube look back at some of the other videos as well especially about the maths for girls We've got another two webinars tomorrow, um, and please do join. Just go onto our, our platform, our website, www.foundersforschools.org.uk to sign up to any one of our webinars. They're all free, and we have some really, really amazing volunteers like Toby who just have so much knowledge, and they're, they're just wanting to share just, from the, just because they want to give back. So it's absolutely amazing. Um, also, what I will say, you will be sent a little feedback survey to the students at home. Please do take out two minutes of your time and just fill out those feedback surveys so we know how we're doing. Uh, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. So follow us so you know exactly which other webinars are coming up. Um, and our next session is tomorrow at 11.30 and we've got another one at two o'clock. So again, just visit our website and all the information is there. Thank you so much again, everyone. And, and, and goodbye for now.